Welcome to Tales from the Caveside, where Lillian and Chris, we bought a cave house and finca on the outskirts of a small Spanish town. Follow us as we learn to renovate and create a home that we will be proud of. That was a slappy, <clears throat> slappy chair. Are you uh, sitting comfortably? I'm sitting comfortably, thank you. Are you sitting comfortably? Yes, that will be. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Sincerest I'm... apologies if it's a little bit echoey. We do live in a cave after all. Yes, and obviously that means we can't talk in a very, very boomy voice like um, Brian Blessed. Jesus Christ, can you imagine what Brian Blessed would be like in here? He'd have all the walls down. Even that would think there's another earthquake. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Pardon? Boom. <laughs> That's what you said. I did. I was booming. Hello. Doing something a bit different. Yes. Yes, he is a bit different. Yeah. That's a different story. Yes. Um, we have had a horrendous week of weather. Um, lots of rain. Gales came to visit a lot. Yeah, she's not welcome. She's not welcome anymore. Go away. Uh, we are currently working in the corral, as you know, and unfortunately, seeing as there's no longer electricity in there, we only get a wee bit of light in from the little window and if we have the back door open, which when you've got sideways rain and gales is not a good idea. So we've had pretty much a wasted week. Uh, so got no, not much video to show you of us removing render from walls, which is pretty boring anyway. But we did go up a few levels on Skyrim. <laughs> we did go up a few levels on Skyrim. Thankfully we didn't have many electricity cuts. That's good. <laughs> the internet was a bit patchy, but that's all right. <laughs> so a little video, a bit different. Yes. Uh, we uh, on this one, we've just taken a bit of video showing our trip through to our supermarket shop. It's not our preferred supermarket, but unfortunately, to go to our preferred supermarket, we have to cross the border into Murcia and back out again. And you've got two kilometres. Yeah, about that. But yeah, two, two kilometres, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not much at all, is it? But yeah. at, the, at the height of the pandemic, there was actually police stops there, so it's just not worth it. Yeah. So currently, so it's currently our usual supermarket. <laughs> yeah. We go through from where we live to La Romana and then through into Aspe and back again. Yes. On the way back, we visit our local bodega. We did this week. We did this week. Normally yeah. you make special trips to the local bodega. Often more than once a week. Yes. And you did actually ask them at the beginning of the lockdown if maybe there was a chance of having their bodega barrels pipelined to here so we didn't actually have to leave and just pay by PayPal. Yes. With our own tap. <laughs> but... And they thought it was a good idea because we're that good a customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, unfortunately it just, the <laughs> price was just too much. <laughs> it wasn't economical. It wasn't economical for them, no. The wine, no. the wine basically is too cheap. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go. But not no. cheap in quality. Oh, definitely not, no. no. I've got the standard uh, Tinto, and Chris has got the Reserva. Yes. Um, and it's delicious. Yes, it is. And it's in our multifunctional glasses, which aren't the posh ones, and not certainly not correct for drinking red wine out of. Not that I'm a red wine snob, but... As a rule, I can't drink red wine. I certainly couldn't back in the UK. But this stuff is, is all right, actually. I don't get any iffy effects from it. I don't get the headaches and the dry mouth and everything else like that. So, don't know. Maybe it's just... Less processed. I think it's, I think it's no. newer, fresher. Don't know. They can't tell me either. They don't, know, <clears throat> they don't know what would be different between buying it locally here or once it's bottled and shipped somewhere else in the, in the world. Don't know. I have asked the question of the very technical lady down there. Yes. So I normally drink beer. Lots of beer. And these are beer glasses? Yes. But we drink wine. <laughs> A fizzy pop. Pop. Water. Sometimes. We have plastic pop. glasses for water. We <laughs> normally work in somewhere where you have plastic glasses. Cold to, tea? To, yeah. All yeah. sorts. Yeah, we have the plastic glasses in case we knock them over while we're working. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so... As Lillian just said, we went to a supermarket for shopping. We left the dogs behind. Um, one of us, I'm blaming Lillian and Lillian blamed me 
Um, and it turns out it was probably my fault because I slashed her out the door, but I thought she was going back to lock the door. Forgot, forgot to lock the, the door up to the cave. So when we, we came back, I was like, oh, there's two dogs in the garden, what's going on? And then realised it was our two dogs that were in the garden and they'd let themselves out. Thank God they didn't let themselves out of the property as well. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been something else. <laughs> anyway, don't yeah. think that'll happen again. Uh, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but Loki's clever enough to learn how to use keys. So I don't know. No, no, anyway. So, yeah, so on the, on the video, we're sort of like going past the front of our place. Um, and just a little bit of the way up, there's a little um, abandoned cave. Mm -hmm. um, and you had, you had a quick look in, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Since we've been here, it's got, some, it's got some really old wooden doors on it. And they've just always been closed. And obviously, it's not my place to do anything. But recently, when I drove past, I noticed that somebody's actually broken one of the doors. So you can see in. And it's really interesting as to what's been abandoned in there. Um, so I, I stuck the camera in, took video for you. Yeah. Um, and then we continue on through and there are various caves under reform around our area yeah yeah there are um, there's also um, then people <clears throat> a, bit, a bit further on where there's that abandoned cave which you'll actually probably see mm -hmm. well you will see I think um, not just abandoned but we actually originally thought it was just a hole in the, what, in the floor in the floor yes yeah, in, in the ground and now suddenly it's got a chimney yeah, or bits of a chimney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they've, they've put a fence around it and they're building it up and all the rest of it. Well, that's it, yeah, yeah. And then, so, uh, it's all very interesting. All very interesting indeed. But, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a, a long video, so we cut it down to best we can. And actually, we'd probably be waffling on just for as long as our video is itself. So, uh, so there you go. What do you reckon? That'll do? That'll do. That'll do. This is our property on the right hand side. Heading up the lane here you can see more caves on the right. They don't look like caves, they're like our little finca they've been built on top of. But they're all, fin they're all caves going down into the mountain. Okay. Just here on the right is a little abandoned property that I said. Somebody's kicked the door in and look what's inside. It's mad. All this has been walked away from, all this equipment. Looks like it's for wine making. There are jars for keeping wine in. It looks like there's a big bucket, um, I don't know, a trough for keeping grapes in. And I, Lord alone knows what's in there at the back. Really, really strange that this has just been walked away from. A mini bodega. Maybe a family bodega back in the day. Don't know if that sort of thing happened. Mm. Beautiful old doors on the front of the property. Such a shame that somebody's trashed it. But that's the way of the world these days, isn't it? As I step away from the caves, you can actually see just above that they've built up. So you could see in there there was a cave underneath and then there's a property above it. Just like our Finca was originally a cave and then something's been built on top of it. And on the left here is Builders Merchant. We're on first name terms with them. And the next big building you can see is an excellent restaurant in La Lienia called Jardín de las Heras. Well recommended. As we go on down this way, we're heading out of La Lienia. Cave houses on the right, ordinary properties on the left. Just up the road here on the right, we thought was just a hole in the floor. But where there's the new fencing is where there's a cave being reformed. And this white property on the right is both a house and a cave. There is a cave underneath. Very strange property up here next. Wouldn't want to live next door to this. It's half modern house, lit up like a Christmas tree at night time. And the other half is an absolute ruin. Wouldn't want to live next door to there. So there there's been a quarry attempt. It looks like it's been abandoned. They obviously didn't find the right sort of marble. There are various bits of mountain like that around here. We see they started. all the way up the mountains fields and fields of almonds and olives all planted in straight lines
it's odd we've literally crossed over one side of the mountain and on this side all the almonds have already lost their blossom well, they, the majority have yeah ours are, some of ours are only just coming into blossom it's amazing how the climate is different one side to the other rock formations around here always make me think of spaghetti western movies a lot of which were actually filmed in Spain much as we think of them as America but just not in this part of Spain more in the interior we're, uh, not far away from a, a small town called La Romana which has uh, some nice bars and things and it's actually where our dentist is <laughs> Yeah. He's a, he's a Cuban who speaks perfect English and living in Spain. And you can see that's marble. We're on a marble mountain, so to speak. And in the summertime, or when the aeroplanes are landing and flying again regularly, there's a gap between the two hills over, over there where you, you just see them fly, fly through there it seems to be the most direct route to Alicante Airport and there's some of the big rocks of marble that the quarry people use the use the ones that they don't need to build walls and all sorts I don't think it'll ever fall down no that's true <laughs> the joys of going shopping and having to wear a mask when you've got a beard <laughs> doesn't work very well okay <laughs> This road, the bottom of this valley, it's all farming. It's low grapes, which we think are for wine, those are high grapes, as in they allow them to grow taller. They seem to be for eating grapes. On that side's all almonds. Can you see there? They've been allowed to grow taller than with. When they get the fruit, they, they allow the fruit to hang down. They kind of cover them in, looks like a cloth bag, doesn't it? It's either a paper bag from one or the other. Stop the birdies. And here on the right, this field, and the ones next to it, and next to it, and next to it, you can literally see an army of men arrive plant it and two three weeks later an army arrives again as it were and harvests it all so it seems we haven't stopped to have a look to see what it is but I'm guessing it's small lettuces things like that quick growing vegetables same I love the way they do those trees mm. the way they've been trimmed This business here on the left has the trees trimmed the same way, like Seems plates. Aggregate storage places, well, isn't it? Yeah, but I just... Some of the stuff we've got come from here. Yeah. Sandstone, different colours, different sizes. And here's one of the classic roundabout arts. They seem to take the opportunity here to use a roundabout to promote a town, put some art on it or something like that. Because of all the grapes around, that's the one for La Romana. Well, it's almost alpine this time of year, with all the green. Yeah. Later on in the year it's brown, very, very brown. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. But it still amazes me the fields and fields and fields of trees planted in straight lines. And you just think, how on earth has somebody got all the way up there? Or down there, down in some weird rambalas and what have you, <coughs> to plant them. And then somebody's got to go and harvest them all. Done on terraces there, weren't they? So they've got safety doing terrace sections, I suppose. I don't know. Never been up there. Okay.
Okay. Um, this is the town of La Lienas over here. It's the church with the two spires. <coughs> There's a famous marble quarry. Lorry's going up that way. And our house is the white one over there. Yeah, no, having difficulty with this. Where's my finger? That one there. So this is the bodega in Algenia. Lovely, lovely shop. You can buy your wines ready bottled, pick up bottles and have the ladies fill them, or even bring your own and have those filled. Some lovely products here. Specials, they've got a fondonette, which is a sweet um, dessert wine, really delicious. All these specials in bottles. When it's not COVID, you can, t you can try these, so everything's kept at the right temperature for actually trying them. And again, it's very famous for its fondillon. That one's of 1955, 1980, 1996, special editions. And this is where you can bring whatever container you've got and they will refill those containers for you. And literally you see people here with huge barrels filling them up. Over here there's the other special wines that you can, gain, you can fill whatever container you bring. So that's an aged wine. That's the reserve. And that's the vermouth. Lots of products here that are specials from various places, bio products and things. Just a lovely, lovely shop, really, really helpful people. And if you so wish, again, once social distancing is over, they do do a trip where you can go around and actually see how everything is made. So this is the Bodega Valleña. Not long back from shopping, just unpacking everything. And somebody decided he wants to go for a ride. So he's jumped in and making himself quite at home. They love going in the car. Don't you? Do you like going in the car? Do you? <coughs> Good girl. We're not going anywhere. You're a happy boy. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Tales from the Caveside. If you enjoy what we're doing, please like and subscribe. We would really appreciate it.